These sharks are growing miniature antibodies. First discovered in camels in the 1980s, these tiny antibodies, about one half the size of conventional ones, are also produced by sharks, llamas, and a few other animals. Regular antibodies are made of four protein chains, two heavy and two light. Small antibodies are made of just two heavy chains. It's thought that this super lightweight version of antibodies has evolved independently several times, suggesting they're highly effective in these animals. We just don't know exactly what they're doing. This hasn't stopped researchers from using mini antibodies and their useful fragments, often termed nanobodies, in clinical and basic science studies. Nanobodies gained early fame for their role in helping to visualize the structure of complex proteins. Their small size lets them bind tightly and deeply, and this can help stabilize ornate molecules whose flexibility thwarts the imaging process. Their structure also has the advantage of letting them function inside of a cell. It's a new way for researchers to study proteins in action, forcing hookups or blocking them, or taking targeted molecules out of the game altogether as the cell goes about its business. On the clinical side, researchers are testing nanobodies and other small antibodies in the fight against diseases, from lupus to lung fibrosis. One holdup has been the llamas and the sharks. In order to get nanobodies tailored to a specific molecule, the molecule must be first injected into the animals. The animals then make small antibodies over the course of weeks or months. Researchers use blood cells from the animals to obtain genes for the small antibodies, and then use bacteria to produce the nanobodies in the lab. But it might soon be easier to obtain nanobodies. A team has made a giant nanobody library in yeast cells that will allow researchers to skip the animal inoculation step. Next on the horizon for nanobodies, getting them to stick to tumors for imaging purposes, and using them to allow drugs to cross the blood-brain barrier to tackle diseases of the brain.